Well, a very good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to this uh, Tuesday of Holy Week uh, this week, when we pause and uh, we remember, uh, not just events that uh, mark uh, a special time of year, but mark uh, events that change the world and have changed history. And we're just going to take this time each evening this week, on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, to, to pause and to conclude the day with prayer. I hope you've had a, a good day, but I recognise for all of us, they are strange days. And uh, what a way to uh, end uh, today than by coming to him in prayer. Uh, everything you'll need is uh, on the screen and uh, we'll join in the words in bold uh, together. So let's use those first words there. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. We're going to use this period just to be silent. Uh, even if we're restricted to home, we can be busy. And so just to use this as a period of reflection, maybe there are things you want to give thanks for. Uh, moments that perhaps pass you by at the time today, but uh, a glint of the sunshine or a spring flower or a telephone call that we just want to give thanks for. Maybe there are things that we recognise as we move to confession. Actually, we need to turn from and to the Lord. So let's use this period of silence first before we use these words of confession. Well, to our gracious God, we turn and we use these words together. Most merciful God, we confess to you before the whole company of heaven and one another that we have sinned in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. We join in these words. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Alleluia. Well, we're going to continue to pray, but uh, pray in the form of a song, an, an ancient song, but speaks of actually sleep being a parallel to death and just as we need the Lord to protect us through sleep so we need to, him to raise us from life to life from death and so we're going to uh, use these words to pray let me lead us and uh, do join in uh, if you know uh, the tune before the ending of the day creator of the world we pray that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night. Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no sinful thought may know. O Father, that we us be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. We're going to come to another wonderful psalm now. It's Psalm 4, and a fitting one for the end of the day. David, as the king, is in trouble. He's surrounded by enemies, but he's able to end there. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for it is you, Lord, only who make me dwell in safety. That is that great reminder that we can stop and sleep, because ultimately our life, our protection, our sustaining is not in our hands, but in his And so let's rejoice in that truth as we say these words together. Let me uh, say the odd verses. And then I'll join you if you join in in the even verses. Psalm 4 
Answer me when I call, O God of my righteousness. You set me at liberty when I was in trouble. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you nobles dishonour my glory? How long will you love vain things and seek after falsehood? But know that the Lord has shown me his marvellous kindness. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There are many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift up the light of your countenance upon us. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their corn and wine and oil increase. In peace I will lie down and sleep, for it is you, Lord, only who make me dwell in safety. Choose these words. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Well, yesterday we looked at uh, just one or two verses from the prophet Zechariah, and uh, we're going to look at the next verse on from uh, that verse that we had yesterday from Zechariah chapter 13. And these words, uh, written, spoken 500 years before the events of that first Good Friday, and yet the Lord, through Zechariah, speaking of what he would do when Jesus would die on that cross. So let me continue as I read verse 1 of chapter 13. On that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. Well, let's use these words of response. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, Lord God of truth. I commend my spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. The Nunc Dimittis, the Song of Simeon and the Magnificat, the uh, Song of Mary, have been sung by the church at morning and evening for, for, for hundreds of years, and rightly so, because both point us to the Lord Jesus being the crowning glory of God's promises. And so uh, let's join in these words of introduction together. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Now, Lord, you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. We join together. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin, and live to righteousness. Well, before we turn to prayer, just for a moment or two, we reflect on those verses from Zechariah. On that day, a fountain will be opened to the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to cleanse them from sin and impurity. 
we saw yesterday that the Lord promised that there would be a day when he would act. It would take him to act. It wasn't a situation God's people then or us now could remedy for ourselves. When he would pour out his spirit, a spirit of compassion and grace. And we saw that uh, grace yesterday was shown in causing people to come to contrition, to recognise the depth of their sin and so turn from it and turn back to the Lord. The Lord said that they would look on the one they had pierced and they would mourn. And we saw that we recognise that when we look on Jesus, we too are to mourn our sin. For as the hymn puts it, it was my sin that held him there. That spirit of grace in our lives that God gives us first leads us to contrition. But actually that act of one being pierced wonderfully leads to something else too. And this verse says it, it leads to purification. Not just contrition for sin, but actually that sin being removed from us, dealt with, done away with. And it all comes linked to this one who would be pierced. That strange thing, a fountain will be open to the house of David. You, you think of some of the great fountains in the world, the Trevi fountains there in Rome or, or, or there in the, uh, in the middle of London as you come near Nelson's Column or somewhere like that. Uh, fountains where, where water flows, uh, they might be places of joy, places of, of getting wet, but we'd hardly say they were places of purification. And yet the Lord says that someone will be pierced. And at that very same time, a fountain will be opened, a fountain that will do something great. It will cleanse his people from their sin. The astonishing truth is that the fountain that was open wide when the Lord Jesus was pierced that first Good Friday was not a fountain of water, but if I can put it like that, a fountain of blood. And that blood, though crimson red, actually washes God's people white as snow. That for those who come mourning our sin and turning from it, turning to the Lord, wonderfully that sin can be done away with. We can be washed white as snow because of that fountain that flows from the one who was pierced. Let me read these words of William Cowper. It's a famous hymn to conclude, but he takes up the theme of this very verse. There is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day, and there may I, as vile, vile as he, wash all my sins away. Dear dying lamb, your precious blood shall never lose its power. Till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. Ere since by faith I saw the stream your flowing wounds supply. Redeeming love has been my theme and shall be till I die. Then in a nobler, sweeter song I'll sing your power to save. When this poor lisping, stammering tongue lies silent in the grave. What a wonderful hymn to reflect this wonderful truth that there is a fountain that flows. It flows for you and me, even the seeming, that when by faith in the Lord Jesus we plunge ourselves in it, that sin that we mourn can also be sin that we're purified from. What a wonderful truth that is today. Well, we're going to come and thank the Lord for that and uh, pray for the needs of our world and uh, our own needs. So let's uh, pray and uh, let me lead us and then we'll have a time of silence where perhaps you can join uh, in whatever prayers you would like to offer. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Father, we thank you that the spirit of grace that you promised not only leads us to contrition, but offers us purification. Thank you, Father, that you cause us not only to mourn for our sin, but then to see the Saviour, who, who opened a fountain wide in his own blood, that we might be washed whiter than white, white as driven snow, that we might know you, that we might know guilt removed and hope. Father, we praise you and thank you for this truth, and might that become all the more precious for us this holy week, we pray. Amen. 
Let's pray for our nation, for our Prime Minister and our leaders, our uh, care workers and frontline workers. Father, we continue to pray for our nation and our world today. Lord, it is a world that you have made, that you love and that you care for. And so we plead to you for it. Father, we continue to pray for a turning back of this current crisis, Lord, that seems to get further and deeper each day. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for our own nation. We pray for our Prime Minister, Father, that you might deliver him and restore him to health. Pray for the government. Continue to give them wisdom and action that they might lead in the best possible way for all concerned. We pray for our key staff. Pray particularly tonight for those who are serving behind the scenes, whose roles we may never hear of. Those working in supply chains and factories. Those delivering things so that key resources can be where they're needed. We continue to pray for our medical services. Protect them. Keep them, Lord, from being infected. Give them all that they need, we pray. And Father, we pray, Lord, for those ill or sick at home or in hospital. We continue to pray for those from our own con uh, congregation uh, um, uh, infected at this time by this virus or struggling due to isolation. Lord, heal them, we pray. If it pleases you, raise them up and restore them to health and sustain them by your presence and love at this time. Father, we do pray too for places around the world where the resources that we are blessed with are lacking. We pray, Heavenly Father, for uh, areas of India where our brothers and sisters are lacking food because of this crisis. We pray, Heavenly Father, for refugee camps and displacement camps in uh, areas of Greece and Turkey, in northern Syria and Yemen. Father, we pray for those and others perhaps not known to us, Lord, that you would uh, protect those camps and places that this uh, virus would not uh, strike there and take so much life. Lord, would you move the world community as it seeks to work together to understand and uh, bring remedy and health in the face of this crisis. Father, we want to pray uh, today for our schools and uh, we pray locally for Ansdell Primary School and Clifton Primary School as staff continue to look after children of key workers. Father, we want to pray for children that are being educated at home, for those isolated from their friends, for those families at increased risk of domestic, domestic violence at this time, for those struggling financially, for those, Heavenly Father, who lack the resources and space that we have. Lord, have mercy, we pray. Please uphold them and all our schools and education establishments in this area and beyond. Father, we want to lift a number of prayers to you now that are on our hearts. And so just in the silence, maybe there are situations that you are anxious about. Decisions that you have to take that you're struggling with. Uh, things that you are down or, or feeling depressed by, or things you want to thank God for, uh, just in the quiet now, offer those to God. Father, for all these prayers, spoken and unspoken, Lord, hear us, not because of ourselves, but because of your Son, who is willing to share his status as the Son with us, that we might approach you confidently as Father. And so, our Father, our Father, hear these prayers, and be pleased to work according to your will, that your will be done, not ours, according to Jesus' name's sake. Amen. Well, let's... Uh, Join in the amens of these two prayers. Almighty God, as we stand at the foot of the cross of your Son, help us to see and know your love for us, so that in humility, love and joy, we may place at his feet all we have and all that we are, through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Let's pray this next prayer together. Visit this place, O Lord, we pray. 
and drive far from it the snares of the enemy. May your holy angels dwell with us and guard us in peace. And may your blessing be always upon us, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Well, let's conclude our time together using these words. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. Abide with us, Lord Jesus, for the night is at hand and the day is now past. As the night watch looks for the morning, so do we look for you, O Christ. Well, if you are able to join us tomorrow, we'll be back together at seven o'clock to pray. And uh, remember, on uh, Maundy Thursday at seven o'clock, there will be a, a live uh, reflection for Maundy Thursday, as well as recorded services available on Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But enjoy the rest of your evening. And as we go, may God bless us that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. Take care. Take care.